I'm on a roll today. Uh, we are now on subsidies part D, and this will be one that probably relates somewhat to you. Uh, this is called the price floor, another example of when market uh, uh, the government intervenes in the market. Uh, the best example I can think of is a minimum wage, which is an example of a price floor. Price floor is a quick definition, simply a price or a wage. Could could be a price on a good. It's not common uh, that uh, businesses cannot go below. The only one I can think of where it's used is with uh, cigarettes, where government can't or businesses can't charge below a certain price. Um, and be, you know, think about the reason for that. Why do you not want cigarettes selling for? I'm stupid here. Two dollars a pack. I know it's way more than that. Um, but think about that. That pretty obvious reason there. And why do you not want wage going below a certain level? Well, in theory, in McDonald's, you know, would they pay their workers a quarter if they get away with it? Who knows? Okay, the, the fact is they don't because of reality. But uh, um, the price floor is uh, designed to, when you think about a minimum wage, it's designed to help people, you know, live more affordably. And it's designed to stop, uh, sorry, I got ink on me. Uh, stop uh, businesses from taking advantage, if you will. Okay, so what I'd first like you to do is to draw this graph or, or look at this graph, whatever you're going to do. Okay, and this is a graph, a stat, uh, I gotta go back, a static graph of, um, of a wage market. So we're just going to say you got a thousand workers, and that wage market, if you've if you got a thousand teenagers that, that could work, that's not going to change much. So if you notice that. Supply curve is well, supposed to be straight up and down, which means it's fixed. So you get a thousand workers today, you get a thousand workers tomorrow, and so on and so forth. Um, the demand curve, which is a normal unit curve, is the demand for those workers. Fast food, um, retail stores, normally, you know, we're in weird times, but normally there's a demand for you. And then E, where it crosses, is what we're going to call the market wage, is what you tend to get paid. You know, and I know, it's above minimum. Most of you make more than 725. Uh, so I'm just going to set it at 10 to make it easy. Okay, so let's say at 10 dollars is what you're reading here. All thousand kids that want to work can find a job, and um, the employers will hire those thousand kids at 10 dollars. Okay, so that is your that's our base, right? You can't see where I'm pointing right here. Okay. Now, let's say that the Congress passes and Trump signs into law um, a minimum wage increase up to 15. So we've got a new floor. Okay, so now just draw that part and, and we'll come back to this part. But now you've got a new floor. Um, so with respect to the minimum wage, what gen generally happens, and it could happen all of these things or some of these things, but if your floor is above your wage, I'm going to move over here. If your floor is above your market, rather, here's, here's what you have to pay, here's what you've been paying. All of a sudden, artificially, everybody gets a $5 raise. Well, sounds good, I'm sure, you know, if you don't think about it too much, well, yeah, I'm getting a $5 raise. But if you're the business owner, if you run a McDonald's or Burger King or whatever, you've got some choices to make. And all of a sudden, your costs have gone up considerably. So, if the floor is above the market, some of these, or all of these, may, and I do stress may, it doesn't have to, but reality tends to create this, and you can probably figure this out anyway, but if the market floor is above the market, you tend to see increased prices, you tend to see increased unemployment, you know, you're going to lay people off, and if you're used to working, let's say you work at a place that's got seven employees, and they go down to six or five, well, you keep your job, but it gives you a lot more work slows things down. And those of you who worked in retail, you know what happens when things get slowed down, how customers react. Okay, uh, You could get hours cut. You could cut the quality of the product. Think about, uh, I don't know if this is possible, but Taco Bell getting cheaper beef. I just Whatever's out in the parking lot. Um, cutting the quantity. It's something as simple as, uh, you know, now Chick-fil-A puts two pickles on the sandwich, now they put one or a little bit less, uh, don't fill up the drinks quite as much, or, um, you know, less onion, whatever it is, kind of thing. 
and uh, you often see increases in automation. And you think about uh, kiosks, ordering kiosks, and self checkout, and and those different types of things. Even back in the day, self service gasoline. Uh, at one point, in time, you know, when I was a boy, you didn't have self service. A dude came out and checked your oil and everything else, and now it's obviously quite different. So if your floor is above your market, that's what you tend to see. Now, to go back to the graph to finish this up, uh, if you see that, this thing, where I'm going across it, connecting to the D, okay, if you've got 1,000 people that will get hired at 10, you've only got 800 at 15. So that right there, this gap, is unemployment. you got 200 kids that will now not have jobs. And who are those going to be? tend to be boys, they tend to be younger, they tend to be maybe the ones that are trouble employees kind of thing. Um, in other words, kids that are normally not in great situations, which this tends to be true. And what you end up seeing is that the kids that probably most need the jobs are the ones most likely to lose them when you raise that wage, which is one of the dangers, if you will, of at least economically, of uh, raising that wage too high looks good politically because it looks like you're helping the little guy and, and so on and so forth but in reality here's what happens and the other thing I guess I'd mention is that you know there have been a couple cities Seattle I think for instance uh, raised their minimum wage so a lot of restaurants that could do it or, or businesses simply moved right outside the city limits of Seattle and it hurt you know the kids that would live in in Seattle to try to get jobs and the customers who had to go elsewhere and so on all because that minimum wage increased and um, it happens over and over and over again so price floor there you go all right